focusing on growth and not goals. Because if you're focused on growth, you are achieving your goals, but you don't stop when you reach your goal. And uh, so this is all broken down into different laws, like the um, training that I'm doing at my director's meeting next week is on Chapter 10, the law of the rubber band. And um, about how, like I mailed everybody, I mailed all my directors a little card um, for the meeting with a rubber band in it, and I had a little note that just said, Think of um, all the uses that you could use this rubber band for. And so at the meeting, we're going to brainstorm the uses of the rubber band and list them on the flip chart. And, um, I mean, I know y'all have all this technology, but I still use a flip chart. <laughs> and, uh, and then, what's the one thing that, that all of these um, uses have in common? What is the one, care, one thing that stands out? Well, the, it's going to have to do with the elasticity of the rubber band. The rubber band has to stretch in order to be useful. And the same thing for us. If we're not stretching outside of our comfort zone and growing, then we're just stuck and we're not doing, you know, we're not becoming better. And so um, the book's really powerful, but this is what, I think it all goes back to this. I wanted to share this part. Um, he said that um, many people um, only use a fraction of their ability and rarely strive to reach their full potential. Um, there is no tension to grow in, in a lot of our lives, little desire to stretch. Sadly, a third of high school graduates, now really think about what this says here, a third of high school graduates never read another book for the rest of their lives. 42% of college graduates similarly never read another book after college. And publisher David Guggenheim claims that only 32% 30 of the U.S. population has ever stepped into a bookstore. Wow. That's pretty profound. And, you know, we are all about bettering ourselves and reading and, and learning and growing together. And so I just think that we just have a real niche to really help our leaders and our company to grow. And there are so many people in the world that just miss out on all this. And this book is so powerful in so many ways. But, um, like, I'm just doing a whole director training on that, this one little chapter, um, which is chapter 10. So I'm going to use a lot of this. Um, and does everybody here know about Audible? Yeah. Y'all, <laughs> Audible is like amazing. Right here? Mm -hmm. yeah. No, down. No, oh, I, for the camera. Oh, oh for the, the camera. camera, sorry. Okay, okay. thank you. There was just an article in the newspaper, I think the trip last week, that said that people who read um, have longer lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, um, th this is on Audible too. So like I listened to it, but... The book, it has questions that you ask yourself after each chapter to really work through, to, to work on yourself and to grow. And um, so I'm doing both. Like, I listen to it so I can get it all in fast. But then I go back and I read the chapter. So in the plane, I wrote my whole director training on that chapter 10. So, that was great. so you would recommend that to do that as a, uh, like, for the rest of the quarter? I think there's about 15 weeks left Absolutely. in the quarter. Absolutely. It's an amazing book. Okay. I'd like to add up. I'm a big John Maxwell fan, and a few years ago, I had, you know those those bands that people wear, for, you know, I had them made, and I, I'll have to, I can find the source, but on that, I put, growth stops when you lose the tension between where you are and where you could be, and that's, that's, that's by, yeah, yes. so that, and that was a really cool thing. Yeah. It makes it really stop to think about. Stephanie Richardson is the one that shared this with me. Mm -hmm. She's um, reading through this. And uh, one of the conversations that she and I had that I thought was so interesting, and this has probably been one of the most profound chapters to me, is chapter 11 talks about the law of trade-offs and the trade-offs we make in our lives and um, how powerful that is. And, you know, like, just looking back at my life and my husband's life and how we've gotten to where we are today, there's some big trade-offs that we've made and all of you guys have made, but there's... It, it just helps you understand that and, and where you are getting in life by making those trade-offs and stuff. But it's it's a real personal book more than like a, a team. It's a personal group. Yeah, it's a huge personal group. Yes. Yeah. I went to, years ago, Sally Schubert did a goal working, cheating. And I remember, I always remember this, that's brilliant. At the bottom of her team goal sheet, she's like, what? What did I do? I remember. Um, she put, what are you willing to give up in your schedule to accomplish this? Because no one's sitting around going, gosh, you know, I've got a couple hours. I, I just have no idea what to do. Sure. So people say they're going to add, but they, but she had people identify, what are you going to subtract? And that right. actually that came huge. my son played travel baseball, and when he made the team, that was the one thing the coach gave them was, what are you going to give up to be able to make, the, you know, to be committed to the wow. team? So yeah. that was on his, uh, that's where I got that. Hmm. That's awesome. I love that. Thank you.
Yeah, you know what? It's the kind of thing that you just learned a whole bunch in an hour and a half. Okay? Let's give them all a big hand again.